So we're continuing uh, with a survey of the figures from the textbook, and right now we're in the second um, second section where where the, the text discusses the amino acyl tRNA synthetases, and the, these enzymes, it's a whole family of enzymes, and they all catalyze the the formation of amino acyl uh, tRNAs, where the tRNA is is chemically linked to the the carboxyl end of the uh, amino acid, and the importantly, they all go through this amino acyl adenylate that's shown here on page one thousand and twenty seven, uh, and ultimately, you'll have the whole tRNA chemically linked to the, to the amino acid going through this uh, acyl adenylate in, intermediate. And there's, uh, chemically, this is similar to the synthesis of fat, fatty acids. And what the amino acyl tRNA synthetases need to do is they need to precisely identify the identity of their cognate amino acid. And, and this, uh, this section here sh goes through one such story of how uh, the synthetase that's responsible for attaching threonine to the threonyl tRNA is able to distinguish threonine from valine and serine. Valine has exactly the same shape, just a, a different chemical group at, at this uh, at this position, replacing the hydroxyl group with the methyl. So how, how the question is, how does the synthetase know that it's uh, using threonine as substrate, and how does it avoid using a, a, an amino acid with very similar shape, valine? As, uh, likewise, serine has the same chemical group, this hydroxyl group, as threonine, and is uh, simply missing one of the methyl, methyl groups. And so it, uh, it's a real uh, puzzle how the, the synthetase synthetases can identify the cognate amino acid and only use the correct one, in this case threonine, and avoid um, a similarly shaped or, um, and, and a, a residues with similar chemical properties. Uh, the, this is um, showing, it's labeled as the active site of threonyl tRNA synthetase, but I, I refer to this instead as the the specificity pocket for the synthetase. And it's showing how a zinc ion is being uh, used to interrogate the identity of this chemical group. And hydroxyl groups will bind favorably with the zinc. And this is one mechanism uh, used by one synthetase for I identifying the cognate amino acid, in this case, threonine, with its, with its alcohol functional group. The chemistry is happening up here at the carboxyl terminus, and that's not the catalytic groups are not actually shown. So, I I think this the better term for this figure would be a specificity pocket for three N L T R N I synthetase. Over here uh, on this side of the page, we see two views of the uh, the synthetase, uh, and where the the text is highlighting that there's both an activation site where uh, the amino acid the amino acyl adenylate and the amino acyl tRNA are, are formed in this site. And then if there's a mistake, if serine accidentally gets attached to the tRNA that belongs, that's supposed to decode threonine codons, then that, that now becomes a substrate for the editing site where the amino acid is removed by, by hydrolysis. And is, this is uh, referred to as a double sieve type of mechanism. Uh, we're we're able to exclude things which are missing chemical properties or which are much bigger than the cognate amino acid because they don't fit into the activation site. And then uh, things that do slip through that first part of the sieve then fit into the editing site. So amino acids that partially resemble the cognate amino acid uh, but are smaller, they'll get into the activation site, but they will also fit into the editing site and, and be removed. So there's a second chance to avoid misincorporating threonine as part of the, uh, uh, misincorporating serine as part of the uh, threonyl amino acyl tRNA. And that uh, is shown in, in greater detail here. Here's the whole tRNA and the activation site and the editing site. So. Uh, this this is the part of the synthetase that's devoted to figuring out uh, the, what's the identity of the cognate amino acid. But the synthetases don't only make uh, the correct choice for the amino acid, uh, choosing one out of 20 
uh, possible choices. In other words, uh, excluding 19 of the non-cognate amino acids, they also have to figure out what's the correct tRNA and only use that particular tRNA. And you can see here that this synthetase is making contact with, um, uh, with the tRNA at, at this stem and also in the anticodon loop. Uh, figure 31.12 summarizes all the places where the, the synthetase is in this large family of enzymes is, is making specificity, uh, finding specificity determinants that distinguish one tRNA from the other ones and using these contact points uh, as a way to discriminate and find the correct cognate tRNA and exclude all of the other uh, tr tRNAs. There are at least 19 incorrect tRNAs, and if you study the co codon table with dots, you'll realize that there's actually many more tRNAs than, than 20. Uh, many, 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 many amino acids have a couple different tRNAs that uh, the synthetase is able to use. And it uses uh, distinguishing features in the anticodon loop often, but also distinguishing features in, in many different parts of the tRNA to tell the cognate tRNA and, and exclude the, the non-cognate tRNAs.